property which has public service supported by public money, but just open to the public. They ought to be employed by the religious institutions that have the particular professional services. That's really the only fair attitude, I think. You wouldn't want to employ a Christian scientist who would deny transfusion. You know, you wouldn't want to employ people who, would, who believe that uh, uh, there should be no medical intervention at all. Why would you do it for a productive choice? Thank you. I want to thank you for uh, your words. They, uh, it's wonderful to hear something positive recently, and I was reminded uh, when you were speaking of the film Who Killed the Electric Car, uh, where which details how we had an electric car quite a while ago that the manufacturers literally squashed. Um, my question, well, comment and question. I often uh, can only think outside of the way we've been doing things uh, when I hear how people are doing things in other cultures and countries. And um, I had a roommate from Holland who said, well, in my country, I was asking her about poverty in her country. She said, well, we don't really have poor because the richest are taxed at such a great extent. Uh, and they don't try to get out of loopholes. They see it as their civic duty so they can have a society that functions. And I'm wondering how, what ideas you have for somehow restructuring things so that uh, our cultural, I'm always not greed, but creating a society that works. That's a great question and a big question. And uh, that's what I would invite everyone to the conversation. That's one of the things I think that exactly the kind of question we should, should be exploring. One thing I would say on it is, at a personal level, you know, the greed is coming from inside here. So some of it starts internally. But then there's a way that our society has socially sanctioned the greed. So I think the first step goes to what this other lady talked about, uh, was the need for regulation uh, in terms of what's happening with our economy. The fact that, you know, when we had a Great Depression, we went through this before, the 1930s, and there were protections put in place so that that wouldn't happen again. But in the past 30 years, the whole ideology of free market has had reign in the country since Ronald Reagan's election in 1980 before then, but certainly since then, the deregulation in our economy has stripped away one by one the protections that have been put in place since the Great Depression. This is all laid out, by the way, if you're interested in this, in a great book by Robert Kuttner um, uh, on, on the whole economy. So I would say that we just have to restore some common sense rules of the road so this kind of, uh, you know, the credit default swaps and all the high finance instruments they went into, couldn't, we couldn't pretend that those were secure and, uh, and safe investments. That there needed to be regulation and protection in place to, make, to keep an eye on what's happening with those investments. So I would say we have to get some common sense, rules of the road, regulations of the economy. I guess my question is uh, kind of uh, steps we could take it seems a question of consciousness and conscience. Uh, so my question is how we would motivate people to vote those regulations in. Because it seems to me that the consciousness of greed is so deeply entrenched in so many people now. Right. Uh, I, want, I want to go follow up on that to the question. That is, many, many speakers in forums we had yesterday talked about how do we take back our communities? And one of the ideas from one of the speakers who wrote a book was yesterday, that this morning, that she had was, why not start with the churches? And I agree with her for her, uh, and I think you mentioned that too. I told her that churches, in our opinion, we need to take them back. You know, we have let the far right take the churches and use the churches for, in my opinion, evil purposes. And we sit back and we listen. We gotta be active. And I think we have to have a plan, so maybe, we can 
talk today about how do we take our treasures back, how do we take the God of Jesus principle into what we do in connection with what we are doing right now. That has a lot to do with it. I mean, I sat in a church, I don't know which I my wife is Sue, but in Rochester, New York, where the preacher, okay, excuse me, the invited preacher was being thankful that someone shot a doctor in Buffalo. Okay? He and listen to this because this doctor was performing an abortion. Someone killed the doctor. And the preacher had the nerve in front of all of us, including our young people, to say that basically this person did good by killing. Listen to this, by killing a medical professional doctor who's doing you know what he's paid to do. And this is a sick minded people we have to do. So on the end, I want to see young people go to church. On the other hand, I don't want to go to church because I don't want to do that kind of film. So my point is, part of our discussion is how do we take the institution that has been corrupted, that could be turned to good, okay, but it's not. And I think you both kind of mentioned that we should discuss that further and explore it in this dialogue. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Uh, can I touch on those front and back here? Okay. Uh, the first one, you know, how do we change the consciousness how do we, so that people then vote for people who will put the regulations in? You know, excellent question. I think the one thing we need right now is we need a serious debate that uh, intellectually, politically, uh, economically challenges the free reign of the free market. And that is at the core of what kind of caused our collapse so the, now with the stock market and the credit freezing and so forth that um, there needs to be a vigorous debate at the local, state, and national level that really takes it head on and said, look, you guys, we're the free marketeers. You've had rain for 30 years. We're seeing the results of your free market approach. It's a disaster. It doesn't work. We need to take a different tack and to really just kind of lay that on. Because a lot of people are not clear about that. A lot of, you know, you and some folks here seem aware of that. But it has not really been crystallized in the conversation. We kind of got whacked with it and then tossed with the $700 billion bailout. And then it's all happening very quickly. Quickly, so I think a conversation at the local, state, on the kitchen tables, in the newspaper, raised the issue. Said the problem has been the deregulation. The problem has been the free marketeers have had free reign for 30 years. You brought us to this point of economic trauma in the country, in the world. It does not work. We need another approach. So that's what I think needs to happen: is this you know, conversation at all levels on that. And then, in terms of PJ's question, you know, how do you take the churches back, taking institutions that have been corrupted and uh, so forth? I think you know, a lot of it is conversation, and I want you know, hats off to Marilyn, hats off to the women and men who organized this event. Let's talk to each other.